Hi sweeties, this is Wedlady77 coming to you with a, uh, I'm going to call it lesson one. <laughs> um, I just finished watching um, the Niecy Nash Wedding Bash on TLC. I had to do it on DVR because when it came on I was working. <laughs> so, <sighs> wow. <laughs> I definitely will consider that whole two-hour extravaganza lesson learned. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Um, <laughs> the reason I say it that way is because there were so many things that happened that I feel that the public at large should learn from and not just watch for entertainment value. Now, first, let me start by saying I love Nishi Nash. I love her. I love her. I have... The only thing I didn't like her in was what launched her into stardom for most people, which was Reno 911. Ugh, could deal without that. But, um, you know, I really love her personality. I, she's naturally funny. So, to put her, who is one of my favorite actors, comedians, and weddings which is what I love to do, in one package, I was there. <laughs> so, I'm not going to start where you think I'm going to start. I'm going to start after that because I want to, you know, devote most of this to this one issue and problem I have that almost made me go through my television screen. So, let's go to the part where Nisi and her mom go shopping for the dress. And... You know, she's trying on dresses, and there were some gorgeous dresses, there were some hits, there were some misses. And she puts on this dress, and she feels the emotion of being a bride. And nine times out of ten, that is how a bride knows the dress is for her. But instead of going with the dress that she wanted, she went with the dress that would make her mom happy. Okay, for those of you who are watching this video, if you are a mother of a daughter, keep watching. If you're just a daughter and you don't have any kids and you get married and you have a mother, go get her, put me on Skype, whatever, because this is just for them. I'll wait while you go get them. Okay. <laughs> Moms, number one, when your daughter gets married, this is not your time. To relive being a bride or try to be a bride if you've never been married or whatever the case may be. It is not your moment. Yes, it is raining truth and consequences for the mothers out there. It's not your moment. It's your daughter's moment. If you didn't have your moment and you don't have a man in your life or you haven't been married or you've been married and you didn't get the wedding you wanted, redo that thing. Get it right. But your daughter's day is not your day. Number two, when it's time to go shop for the dress, weigh in your opinion if your daughter asks. But don't you guilt trip her. Don't you make her feel like she has to pick what you want her to pick. I don't care if you're paying for it. I don't care. Because you want her to be happy. If you love her, you want her to be happy. Regardless of whether or not you're skinning and grinning, because guess what? It ain't your day. <laughs> now, with that being said, I love mamas. I love mama's opinion. And I know that to a certain degree, a daughter has a connection with mama. I love my mom. I love my mom. But I wouldn't let her pick clothes for me. I just won't. So, now I digress. Get the camera back to your daughter. The laptop, the computer, whatever. Get back to your daughter. daughter. Alright. So that was my first issue. I just... That made me very uncomfortable. Now, I will say... I loved how... Nisi and Jay had their connection. They shared their connection with their family. They were trying to, before the wedding, integrate their connection with their children and make them a family and make them realize the beauty of that and I I love that great wonderful the fishing thing 
That was hilarious. Um, the one person who was all dressed up gets sick. Um, also, oh, let's just get to getting this me suicide. Michelle, the consultant. If you out there, I got a pimp slap waiting on you. You know you was wrong. Okay, let's just start with the first meeting. And those of you who watch my other videos and you've seen how I give tips about consultants and how things should go and what should happen at an initial consultation and that type of thing, um, refer back to that if you haven't. Michelle broke every rule. There is no other job for the consultant during an initial consultation but to not just, secondly, is to sell yourself because that's what you're doing. But most importantly is to build confidence in that couple or that bride to let her know that, yes, I'm capable of handling your wedding. Yes, I understand what you want. I understand what you don't want. This is how I can help you reach your vision. Now, I know there are parts that they chopped out because this television is called editing, cutting room floor, okay? But the simple fact that after their consultation, Nisi pops out and goes, if you're not as great as they say you are, we're going to have some problems. That means you didn't do your job. You did not work to make her feel comfortable about your skills as a consultant. And... That's problematic. You know, instead you up here toasting it up with champagne like you in the daggum Neo video, Champagne Life or something. No. I believe that consultations and wedding consultant, there's no room for alcohol. Because if you get your bride or your groom or their mama partially drunk or tipsy, they're not going to remember anything you said to them. Alcohol has no part in consultations. Casual meetings, you know, that type of thing, fine. Y'all just having a lunch time to get together. But if y'all having serious meetings, keep the alcohol in the fridge. That has nothing to do with your job. Sorry. Second of all, she didn't even listen to the child. Okay. She specifically said, I don't like the elements. Now, I will interject and say that in the end, it worked out for her. But in real life, non-reality TV, non-TLC editing, no, you don't make that mistake. I'm sorry. Not working. You have no business not listening to a bride when she specifically says that she does not want something. And that's the place that you take her. In accordance to <laughs> that previous statement, I have to come back with how the hell the budget get $12,000 over and you didn't at any point call this woman on the phone and inform her. What the hell of it? <laughs> I had reminiscent feelings of when they had that whole reality show with Carmela Anthony and Lala and they were getting married and she was sitting down talking to the um talking to Lala and Lala was like, So how's it going with the budget? And she goes, Oh, we're hundred thousand over. Like she said, Oh yeah, it's gonna cost you fourteen ninety five instead of twelve ninety five. If somebody gives you a budget, they give you a budget for a reason because they don't want to spend more than that. It is your job as a consultant to make sure that you either meet it or come in under it. As long as they're being realistic. Like I've said in previous videos, if you want 300 guests and you got $2,500, that's not a realistic expectation for a planner to plan a wedding for 300 guests with $2,500. It just, the math is, that ain't new math. That's old math. That's arithmetic. Little house on the prayer math. That don't even know. The fact that it is seven days before this woman's wedding and she has to sit up here and have a phone call from you saying, oh, we're short on some money. And you hadn't even put all the elements in of her wedding. That bothers me. And then she used the excuse of, well, prices with vendors go up all the time. 
bull crap. When you go and you pay that deposit and you give that vendor that money, whatever they've written on that contract, whatever they've given you in their scope or their analysis or their financial breakdown is what you're paying. And you and they better deliver on it. So don't you ever use the reason the reasoning that oh well the, the price went up. <laughs> Whatever. I wanna hear that bull. That was just straight bull. It showed your inefficiency as a planner, Michelle, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care if you and the Oscar parties and all that stuff. Yeah, sometimes those Oscar deals have unlimited budgets. But when you come down to the real world and when you're talking about people's weddings and their special days, they usually have a budget and they want to stick to it. So you need to be mindful of that. Actually, I send that out to all my colleagues, especially those who are in higher end planning. Go to school, learn what budgeting is, take a finance class, and learn to stick to it. Quit screwing around with people's money. Quit trying to line your pockets with people's money. It's rude. It's nasty. And it's not what this business is about. But I digress. Anyway, otherwise, I love the show. Great, wonderful, heartfelt ceremony. The kids were incorporated. But I'm going to get off here. I do have some other videos I need to pump out today. So, on that note, um, I wish you all wonderful wonderful week and kisses and hugs to everybody rate comment subscribe let me know how you feel did you watch the show was it great for you let me know see you later bye bye